Since the 2020 election, the comparisons have increased of our current period of political acrimony and distemper to the period before the Civil War. During that time, then President Abraham Lincoln led the nation by listening to and learning from others with whom he politically disagreed. His patience, focus, and equanimity hold lessons for current leaders if they've got the ears to hear them. For more on this, let's bring in Steve Inskeep. He is co-host of NPR's Morning Edition. And most importantly, he is the author of Differ We Must, How Lincoln Succeeded in a Divided America. Steve, welcome. It's so great to have you here. It's good to be here, John. Um, he was a politician, as you point out. Yeah. Um, what did that mean? What essential skill did he have? His skill was coalition building, trying to build a majority, which he uh, pro was a problem that he faced throughout his political career. He started as a young politician in the minority party in his state. He eventually picked up this issue, slavery, where many people had strong feelings, but it was hard to get a majority for any one view. And he wasn't going to win if he did not find some way to win over people who disagreed with him, even people who were never going to change their fundamental beliefs. He would try to figure out some way that he could work with them. Do you think that kind of, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but, right but as you describe it, I mean, he's able to have conversations with people he disagrees, yeah. um, have some patience. Do you think any of that's possible in today's got to have it now, you know, world? It's really hard. It's really hard. We are trained to do other things. First, we're trained to denounce ostracize, isolate people who we believe to be wrong on an issue. Lincoln didn't take that approach at all. There were people who uh, li were literal slave owners, and he would deal with them and try to get something useful out of them. There were radical anti-slavery activists who thought that Lincoln was way behind and backward, and Lincoln would try to deal with them. It is possible today, if you're listening to the other person, not necessarily going to agree with them, but just try to figure out out of 10 big issues, is there one? where we can get along. Right. What also struck me is you, you his equanimity. How, um, that it has been said that he had this idea of negative capability, that he could hold two differing ideas in his head and yeah. not get, you know, freaked out about yeah. it. Where did that come from? Um, I can't really say except that he had a difficult upbringing. He grew up on the Indiana frontier. His mother died when he was very young, and he had to work very hard, which was very common, but he had to pull himself up in the world by himself. He was mostly self-educated. But when you talk about holding two ideas in play at the same time. I'm thinking of an anti-immigrant activist who was a friend of his. Lincoln found his ideas about immigration to be repugnant, said, if these kinds of people ever got in power, I'd rather move to some other country like Russia. But he wanted this guy's vote and the votes of his supporters and worked with him. He could do that kind of thing all the time. Because he understood that essentially that the world he'd chosen to work in was a world in which you need votes. Yeah. And if yeah. a vote, you know, you need the vote no matter what you Think this of the guy. is the thing that I think some people overlook. Yeah. Even if the person is totally wrong, they still have power because they have the vote. Yeah. As long as we have a democracy, which I hope we continue to have, that's going to be a reality. And so you want to try to get something out of the other person if you can. One of the other things I loved is, is you talked about how people talk about Lincoln's intellect, but he was more a reader of people than yeah. a reader of books. This is a thing I didn't understand until I did the research. I mean, you learn, well, I learned as a kid yeah. uh, about Lincoln's obsessive reading. I don't think he was really all that well read, mm -hmm. but the people he met were all worth reading as people in a democracy. And from his earliest days, his stepmother leaves behind stories of Lincoln studying adults in the room and wanting to know every single thing that they have to say. What do you think, what did he know? I know the answer to this, but I'm, I'm going to let you say, <laughs> what did he it. know about people? What did he know, particularly about politicians? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that Lincoln realized or understood himself that people were driven by self-interest, yeah. which is a cynical sounding thing to say, a dark thing to say. But it's also just real. We all have to look after our interests. And he realized as a politician, if he was going to succeed, if he was going to get votes, he needed to appeal to people's interests. He needed to tell them, as white voters, overwhelmingly white electorate at that time, he had to tell white voters why slavery was bad for them and for their interests, why they should care at all about this. And when you study his arguments about slavery, you realize he was doing that. 
it, it, that point was really interesting to me because he wasn't questioning their motives, he was accepting them. Yeah. He was understanding yeah. them. Yes, exactly. You needed to meet people where they were. Yeah. You needed to realize that they would have certain fears and anxieties and you needed to address them in some way in your arguments. You couldn't just lecture people. You couldn't just tell them to be better or to be moral even. They would act on their interests. Politics fundamentally is a game of interests. Now, with that said, Lincoln would try to align people's interests with some higher moral purpose, which he ultimately did with an act like the Emancipation Proclamation. Here's one out of left field. Has this changed the way you thought about the way you do your job? You know, it really has. Uh, it's deepened my understanding of the idea that you think about the other person. I mean, I'm not trying to win votes, right? right. I am trying to explain stories to people on the other side of the radio or the audio player, whatever they're doing, or on the other side of this camera here. And I want to think about who that person is and what they need from me in order for me to get the story across to them. Right. Well, that's a great lesson for all of us. Yeah. Steve Inskeep, Differ We Must. Thank you so much for being with us. It's great to be here.